Hello, I'm Hannah. Hi, I'm Patrick, and for our Monsoon project, we modeled a passive solar house on Mars. Why, you ask? Um, I'll tell you why. There are lots of space missions, um, particularly to Mars, and there's lots of interest in this. And we thought it would be interesting if we could minimize the cost of these space missions by improving the efficiency of houses or colonies on Mars, for example. So what we did is we modeled a passive solar house, and how this works is you get the sun's energy coming into the house during the day, a thermal mass heats up a bunch, and then during the night, it releases this temperature into the house. And what this aims to do is create a more stable environment in the house. So how do you make the most efficient house? Well, we created a rotating house such that it follows the path of the sun. So in the morning, you get direct sunlight hitting the house, and um, by later in the day, you hit it, uh, you get direct sunlight hitting it again. And we model this with this graph, such that in 12 hours, it'll hit it twice, and then for 12 hours, which represents night, you'll get zero um, insulation. And for our thermal mass, for its energy, we have insulation minus convection, and consequently, we have the energy of the air, um, convection minus conduction. So to validate our model, um, we started a baseline series using parameters given by real-world values of poly polyurethane foam, which is used in insulation, um, solar windows, which are two inches thick, and ceramic tile, which has probably some of the most realistic um, values for temperatures on Mars. So we increased the thermal mass, and it did what we expected it to do. Um, we went from half of a meter to 10 meters, and this gave the thermal mass um, uh, just a larger area, um, a larger volume, excuse me, and this, so the thermal mass, its temperature, um, remains about 290 degrees Kelvin, and the um, temperature of the internal air kind of fluctuates on its own. Um, then we decrease the efficiency of absorption from 0.97 to 0.01, so essentially zero, and it did what we expected it to, um, because the thermal mass uh, is retaining so much heat, um, consequently, the air is not going to heat up. Let's look at results now. What did we learn from this model? Um, I'll talk about three graphs. This one is the minimum air temperature, this is the maximum air temperature, and this is a combination. First, let's look at minimum air temperature. So, as we can see, this is a contour plot um, sweeping over two parameters. One is the insulation, that's insulation with a U, um, and the thermal mass specific heat capacity. And we looked at these values as realistic ranges for what could be done on Earth. Um, and looking at this graph right here, we can see that this red area uh, represents the minimum air temperature, and this minimum air temperature, you want it to be hot. Um, so this represents 275 degrees Kelvin to 280, and that is about 50 or 40 or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is really the only regime in which a human could survive, is the minimum air temperature and the fluctuations as the temperature goes up and down, up and down um, from day to day. And if we look at the maximum air temperature, we'd like this to be on a lower side of things. And this scale, right here and right here, these are different. So on this plot, um, the blue is where you'd be able to survive. And this is 300 to 305 approximately degrees Kelvin, which is about 115 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a little bit hot, but we think you could survive in that. So now, let's look at the combination of these two to find out, given the maximum air temperatures and the minimum air temperatures, where you could really survive. Uh, so this plot right here is, goes from green, um, is high chance of survivability, to gray, which is you're going to die. Um, and the two lines, two sets of lines going across this way and going across this way represent these two plots overlaid. Um, and as we can see, we'd like the blue on this plot right here, um, the lower, lower temperatures right here, and the warmer temperatures um, for the other one. And what we get is a regime of survivability plot, which is green. Um, so this is where you could survive, and that's approximately 0 0.025 to 0 0.028 thermal conductivity of the insulation and about 1,000 to 1,500 um, as the specific heat capacity for the thermal mass. And we looked into this, and these values are reasonable. So we could say that you could survive inside a passive solar house on Mars as we modeled it. Um, so for our future work, we modeled this um, using only the energy of the sun. Um, to possibly make a comfortable versus like actual survivable house, um, we thought about possibly implementing an HVAC system, which would maintain the temperature around room temperature. Whereas in these, you get like cold temperatures and warmer temperatures, but if you want it at that perfect temperature of 
around 20 degrees Celsius. I think an HVAC system would do that. In addition, some future work that we'd like to do uh, would involve modeling this house over a whole year. Because um, mm -hmm. as we know, the, there are seasons on both Earth and Mars, and it would be interesting to try to get this house um, over a full year's worth of data um, for temperature on Mars um, and see how it would behave and maybe add other components of Solar House, such as different window, um, maybe different uh, thermal masses, and see what would happen. Um, we'll catch you next time, and thank you for watching. Thank you.